Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The real cause of Elizabeth I's death. One of the most successful queens in history was Queen Elizabeth I. The final Tudor monarch would achieve brilliant victory against the Spanish Armada, which at the time was the most feared naval fleet the world had ever seen. She would manage to sort out a number of problems inside of her kingdom, and she also had a rather brutal side. She would sentence Mary, Queen of Scots, to death, and she would execute a number of other prominent people, including some of her favourites. To many people at the time, they believed their queen was immortal, and she was known as Gloriana. However, as the 1600s came around, she was becoming increasingly more frail. One thing that has not been cleared up, though, is what killed the final Tudor monarch. And there are a number of interesting ideas as to what the final cause of Elizabeth I's death was. But what is the story of this? Elizabeth I, by 1603, was old, and she knew that an old queen would not appeal to the younger people, who were almost waiting for her death to signal in the birth of a new dynasty on the throne. It's believed that, for a number of years, the Queen had been suffering with her mental health, but she was no longer a graceful and charming monarch. She had grown paranoid, and rather bitter in her last years, and especially, she grew very lonely as many of her close friends passed away. She would execute one of her former favourites, Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, who had planned to rebel against Elizabeth, and even seize her during his uprising. Devereux lost his head inside the walls of the Tower of London, but his execution signalled that the Queen was very much in control. Elizabeth I did allegedly grieve Devereux, as she nurtured him as a young man, and the Queen would sit in dark rooms and would cry after considering his brutal end at a young age. But by the winter of 1602, Elizabeth was feeling very ill, and she had caught a chill following walking in the cold winter air. She was also complaining of a sore throat, as well as aches and pains. Inside of her private apartments, she would sit and lay on cushions, and many would tell her to go to bed, but she would refuse. She claimed that, I am not well, but refused to be seen by doctors, and many believed that Elizabeth I would get over her illness and make a full recovery. However, it could be conceived that the Queen did not want to get better. She was old, frail, and tired, and she was losing her friends, and she may have been ready to die. She would have believed that her friends would have gone to heaven, and possibly Elizabeth was ready to join them. As her condition got worse, the Archbishop of Canterbury was summoned to her side, and he held her hand and spoke to her about getting better. Archbishop Whitgift spoke to her about heaven, and the Queen just squeezed his hand and could not speak at this time. It was known to all of those who attended on the Queen that Elizabeth I was dying. Her ladies-in-waiting then began to take a vigil around her death, and in the early hours of the 24th of March 1603, after falling into a deep sleep, Queen Elizabeth I died. The death of Elizabeth was announced on the streets of London, and people responded with a stunned silence. For 45 years they had been ruled by Queen Elizabeth I, and they knew no other monarch on the throne. However, Queen Elizabeth I had stipulated a number of things before her death. She requested that her body was not embalmed. However, this was not adhered to, and she was embalmed before her remains were placed inside of a lead coffin. But another thing Elizabeth said that she did not want after her death was a post-mortem. With this, it left the question as to what killed Elizabeth I without an answer. And despite Tudor medicine not being great, if she had had a post-mortem, it would have been clearer as to what killed the last Tudor queen. One of the biggest theories regarding what killed Elizabeth related to her makeup that she was infamous for wearing. When she was in her late twenties, Elizabeth I caught smallpox, and she was very ill, but she did recover. Smallpox left her face severely scarred, and Elizabeth, a woman who was once proud of her beauty, then struggled to accept the scars on her face. She wore a type of makeup which was common in the period, which was known as the Spirits of Satin. This helped the Queen have a smoother skin and a very white complexion, and it stayed on for long periods of time, up to around a week. 
However, this makeup was very dangerous, and one of its main ingredients was lead. This was very dangerous, especially if consumed, and people in the Tudor period did not know about the dangers of lead poisoning, and it was actually present in many products at the time. Elizabeth I continued to use lead makeup heavily, even in her final days, and some historians have claimed that she may have suffered from blood poisoning caused by the lead, and this could have contributed to her death. There may have been other substances that poisoned Elizabeth I too, as the lipstick and rouge that she wore also contained mercury, which of course is also poisonous. The products that she used to even remove her makeup contained mercury, and this could have contributed to her illness. Other theories regarding her death relate to more diseases and illnesses that the Queen could have contracted. She may have had cancer, and this at the time was not very well known about, and it was not as well researched as it is today. If Elizabeth I did get cancer, then there was no chance of her having treatment, or the cancer removed at all. Tudor surgery and medicine was nowhere near up to this standard, and the Queen may have also contracted pneumonia which could have developed from her earlier illness or cold and fever that she had. As she was elderly, by the standards of the time also, this was possibly a dangerous illness that could have killed her. She may have also had some form of bacterial infection. Also, interestingly, her mental state and depression could have led her to her death and her giving up. It was clear that the Queen was depressed and was struggling, having lost many of her best friends, who she had known for decades. Many of these had also known Elizabeth from when she was a child, and she was in decline with her mental health. She was incredibly low at times, but she tried to push forward when she should have been taking rest. She may have been ready for death, and may have not been willing to fight her fatal illness, and her mind may have told her body that she was ready. As mentioned, Elizabeth did not permit a post-mortem to be done to her body, so it's impossible to say what for certain killed Elizabeth I. It may have been her makeup or an illness which she could not shake, but it may have also been just the time for the Queen. She may have believed that her time was up, having valiantly reigned over England for decades, and her reign was a great period of change for England. The Queen was given a magnificent funeral, and her coffin was covered in purple velvet and was drawn by four horses who were draped in black. She was buried inside of Westminster Abbey, and today is housed inside of a huge and ornate tomb. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.